Hello, welcome everyone. You've joined the Fiber Co's celebration party for the spring summer 24 season. Thank you for coming. My name is Daphne. I'm with the Fiber Co. I started the Fiber Co hmm, over 20 years ago. And here with me today is my colleague, Becky. Becky is our design project manager. And for the next hour, we're gonna spend the time going through everything that's new from the Fiber Co for the spring summer season ahead. So thank you very much for coming. Um, hi, Becky. Hi, thank you for having me. Yeah, welcome. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to do one of these without you. You're my official wingman on these uh, <laughs> presentations. So I appreciate you making the time for it. Oh, and really I don't know about you, but we we do have signs of spring down here in Cumbria. Yeah, it's coming. It's coming. A few daffs out there and mm -hmm. some blossoms on the tree. And it's quite exciting. So um, wherever you're joining in from, you can uh, maybe pop that in the chat box, which you should be able to access and let us know where you're coming from or if you'd like to tell us what you're knitting, what you're excited about knitting for the spring summer season or what season you're about to enter if you're in the northern hemisphere and you celebrated the spring equinox a couple of days ago or yesterday here in the uk maybe tuesday night in the in the most of the us or wherever you're from just uh drop us a line in the chat and uh, we'd love to see what you're saying um we have a couple of administrative things just to go through uh, if you just want to chat that's in the chat if you have some questions that you want to get answered please use the Q&A box that's down below uh, on your screen. And uh, if you put some questions in the chat, we'll try to catch it. Our, my colleague, Natasha, it will be in the chat. She'll, her name will show up as Natasha from the Fiber Co. And she'll try to you know, get your question answered there. But sometimes the chat can move quickly and we miss things there. Uh, so try to use the Q&A. And we'll have plenty of time for Q&A at the end. So um, I think with that all, um, maybe behind us, Becky, we're ready to dive in and do what we came here to do, which is talk yeah. about everything that's Sounds new. Good. Sounds good. Okay. All right. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we will get started. Bear with me. Okay. Here we are. Celebration party. Yay. <laughs> um, it is really fun to celebrate the spring season, especially if you're like me and you um, you have either a long winter season or a cold or a gloomy one. I mean, I guess we all do to some extent, but uh, maybe not all of us, but we, we definitely get excited about spring around here. We get sunlight hours in the summer up till past 10 o'clock, 1030 at night. So that's always welcome. And uh, let's get started on a couple of, here we go. <clears throat> all right. This is what we're going to go through today. We're going to have a little introduction. I had a look at the uh, registration list and I saw a lot of familiar names and we thank you for coming back. But I saw some new names too. And so it might be that you're already familiar with us or maybe it's just your, the first time you're getting uh, to know the fiber company. So I thought I would go through a little bit of that and in an introduction, and then we'll dive into the new designs. As we go through the new designs, we're gonna talk about why the yarn is a good choice for that design. And then we're gonna look at our new yarn shades for the season. And we're gonna pick one of our yarns and we're gonna take a deep dive to go in and I can show you the at, at, at sort of kind of a high level what the color development process is all about for one of our yarns. And uh, we'll have, we have some samples to show, not knitted garments, but some swatch samples to show and some uh, skeins to show. And oops, sorry. I, I jumped ahead a little quick there. And then we're gonna have a chance to win some prizes. We have a question to ask you and uh, then everybody gets a chance to win a prize. And at the very end, there'll be some Q and A about anything you saw in the presentation. So what are these prizes about? Because that's the fun part. Well, everybody will have a chance to win um, by answering that question at the end of the presentation, one of these um, uh, three prizes uh, for those who get the correct answer will choose a winner for one of each of these three prizes at random and I'm going to help you. So what does it look like? It looks like this little yarn ball right here. Throughout the presentation, you'll see these yarn balls and you need to count them and just put some marks down on a piece of paper and I'm gonna help you every time I see one, I'm gonna say, here's a yarn ball. And just as a way that, uh, so you can see how I'm gonna do that, I'm doing it right now because this is our very first yarn ball. 
Uh, so count this. This is number one. Everybody's a winner right now. And I'm going to do this throughout the presentation. And uh, hopefully we have as many people as possible get the correct answer. And we'll be able to have lots of potential winters, winners. All right. Now, the introduction. I'll keep this short, but I think for those of you who are new to us or maybe don't know about our background, it's quite interesting sometimes to hear a little bit about this. And I just thought I'd mention also that here's a yarn ball. So make sure you count this one. But we started the fiber coat just over 20 years ago. We had an idea uh, for uh, making unique artisan yarns, the kind of yarns I didn't see on the shelves at that time and wanted to see as a knitter. And I bought a small, very small, tiny, micro size uh, spinning mill and started making yarns. And uh, that's still at our core to today, how we go through the product development process. We always think about what isn't out there, that what could we create that's a little bit different from what's available, either from a color aspect or a a blend of fibers or usage. Um, sometimes we just think about uh, the weight of the yarn and what do people like to knit with the most, and that's a jumping off point. Uh, but also, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, these are our three guiding core values as we do this work that we do and that we love to do. The first one is natural fibers because that's was that was our generous our genesis. We had all these natural fibers. And we wanted to do something with them and create the kind of yarns that I wanted to have, but didn't see. And so natural fibers are important to us and that's what we use. But recently in one of our products, we started using a recycled nylon product and um, that's in one of our yarns. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later on and why we did that. But also community has always been important. I don't know about you, but if you get exposed to um, any kind of groups related to making with with yarn, uh, you probably right away recognize that it's a very open community uh, that people are always willing to share either their skills or their ideas or have you tried this or have you seen that? And for us, we're just uh, we are just really really interested in hearing what your thoughts are. And also there's a group of designers that are some of the best in the world that work with our yarns. And so we like to provide the, the interest and inspiration for all of the makers and designers out there to work with us. So we think about all of you lots of lots of times every day. Um, finally, I would say a sense of place is really important to us. So we started in New England. Today, we are headquartered in Northern England. Um, and uh, you know, even the African savanna inspires some of our work in other places. These are all places I've lived in my life. And so I have quite uh, an interest in the world and what's out there. And so some of our ideas stem from, from that and places that other team members have been and their contributions to that idea of a sense of place. So um, that's what we are about. Now, enough of us. This is what you came to see. And this is what you're about is wanting to see the things that will inspire you for what you make during the seasons ahead spring and summer and here you can see new designs and we have new designs in six of our yarns there are at least two new designs in all six of these yarns and for luma we have five new designs and for Anne make dk we have four new designs so where we're going to go first we're going to follow left to right and this is zero our first two designs in zero becky's going to introduce the, the design and then i'm going to tell you a little bit about the yarn so becky first up Hi. This offshore's top. Hello. So yes, oh, no. our first zero design, the soft shores top by Dorothea Ninadovic. And it's a luxurious sleeveless top, which the designer said she wanted to give the impression that it could vanish when touched due to its lightness and translucent fabric. I think that's a beautiful quote. Um, it's knitted top down. There's negative ease on this one, one to eight centimeters, zero to 0 0.25 inches. And the flattering, the really flattering silhouette of the base, it's achieved from the front and back, the stockinette stitch panels, they slant inwards and they narrow, and then the garter stitch panels, they, they widen. So it gives a really flattering silhouette. There's an I-cord neckline um, that's picked up at the end just to, to finish the garment off. 
and it's suited for advanced beginner advanced beginner knitters. So yeah, Daphne, could you tell us a bit more about Ciro and, and this design? Yeah, sure. Now Ciro is a blend of 40% organic cotton and 40% Surrey alpaca and 20% merino wool. Um, the Surrey alpaca, if if you know what alpaca is, it kind of, there are two different types of alpacas. So a lot of people say llama and alpaca and they mix them up, but a llama is quite not that different, but same family, but usually larger and the alpacas. And there's two types that are driven by the type of fiber that they have. And the one that we use in this yarn is Surrey. And one of the reasons why that is, is because when we created, a, when we set out to create a brushed yarn, we didn't want to just offer another mohair yarn. So many uh, browns have beautiful mohair brushed yarns, and we just didn't feel like we had anything to add to that. So we tried a Surrey version of this. And what the Surrey does is it can be brushed, but it it, it creates a more subtle uh, halo as opposed to a very fluffy brushed yarn. I think you can see that easily on this, this fabric here. Yeah. Now the cotton gives it a real strength and the cotton is the core. So a, a brushed yarn will have a cotton fiber in its core and then it'll have fibers that are either wrapped around it or some way embedded into that core that then go through a machine that brushes that the fiber. So that cotton core keeps it nice and lightweight it also, because cotton is a more economical fiber, makes zero a uh, very accessible yarn from a price perspective. And there's a little bit of merino in there as well to help it um, have some body. The cotton and the Surrey alpaca create quite a bit of drape. So it's it's good for garments um, that are, uh, you know, without having to hold doubles. So so many of the um, the mohair yarns that are on the market are often, if you want to make, uh, they're often lace weight. And so if you want to make garments with them, you're, you're holding it with then another lace weight um, merino yarn or fingering weight yarn to get kind of a garment uh, knitting gauge that, you know, you don't want to have tiny, tiny stitches for. So Ciro is really flexible. You can knit it at lots of different gauges. And um, here you can see the soft shores top takes two to five hanks. That's across nine sizes. And it is shown here in the shade, Ghost Dunes. Now, some of the Ciro yarns have a white cotton binder and some have a black cotton binder. So keep that in mind, because later on, when we go through the new color development and dive deeper into that, I'm gonna explain why we do that and show you some really clear examples of the differences and what it creates. I would say just right now that stitch work shows best in the light colors of Ciro, the ones with the white cotton binder. And if it has the black cotton binder, they, the knitted stitches tend to uh, recede and it just looks very um, kind of fluffy and uh, uh, muted. So you can't really see stitches. So you wouldn't want to spend a lot of time doing fancy stitch work because it really wouldn't show through on the fabric. Mm -hmm. And here on the soft shores top, you've got this beautiful garter stitch and stockinette stitch. So um, Becky, tell us what a, uh, uh, how we've gotten a little bit of, um, texture in showing in this beautiful piece, this lovely cowl. I know this one. It's so fun. Um, this is a sea garden cowl designed by Becca Parker. And the designer wanted to interpret the beauty and co complexity of the coral reef. So you can see that sort of coming through in the little, the little flubbers. It's made up of 18 granny square blocks with a popcorn stitch to create those flowers. The motifs in the centre, the squares are all worked individually and then joined together um, with crochet seam on the wrong side and then eventually they'll be all joined and you'll get that, that cowl tube. And then there's a little contrast and edge in just added on the two remaining, the top and bottom edges to finish it off and be suitable for beginner beginner crocheters. So it's really fun and a lovely, I think the color palette choice in this one is really well well put yeah. together. Yeah, I agree. And we came up with some other uh, color combinations as well across the Ciro line um, and made some suggestions and kits on our website for that. And oh, guys, here's a ball. So please count this, this ball. Um, it's an affordable project, very affordable project because it's just one hank each. And because Ciro is so soft, you know, this is going to feel terrific uh, next to the skin. Um, designer uh, Becca Parker, who we've worked with in a couple of our other crochet collections, 
she was like, you know, a lot of people stay away from yarns that have this sort of texture for crochet, but she just wanted to prove a point that crochet can easily be used for um, with uh, a brush yarn like this. And uh, also, I think uh, the idea we were attracted to it as as a project because uh, granny squares are something that even knitters who don't really crochet kind of if they just know the basic crochets, they can do a granny square and they like yeah. it. And then the texture really, even though these are some of the darker colors with the black cotton core, the texture comes out because of that kind of center motif that uses something called a popcorn stitch, which is uh, the petal shape that you see there. And it's it's easy. It's just really that you're doing four double crochets in the same stitch and then you pull the yarn through the top and then bring them together and it creates that beautiful little petal and all that texture really almost sits on top like that. So um, that is the, uh, that's the last of our zero designs. <laughs> so now it's time to jump to Acadia and we have two designs. Becky, tell us about the first one. Okay, so there's a little bit of zero just peeping in on this one as well. This is the Ocean Bloom sweater designed by Julia Desini. It's an elegant sweater with a relaxed fit. It's got big drop shoulders, wide neckline, three quarter length sleeves. And it's all over stockinette, stitched, top down knitted. And it has a Japanese shoulder technique. And the designer, so this is where the zero comes into it. The designer's given the option to decorate with embroidery in two shades of zero. And that was inspired by the plumeria that grows wild along the Hawaiian coastlines. So Julia thought that the like the fluffiness of zero would help to sort of you know mass look like that living flower look. Um, advanced beginner knitters, and then there's also the option to work without embroidery and in just in Acadia. So that's on the you can see that on the next slide that Daphne will talk us through. Yeah, this one here, the 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 color in the first one was just the natural acru color called egret. And this one here is done in the color uh, granite. Uh, now, Acadia is an interesting yarn because it's a blend of 60%, <clears throat> excuse me, merino, 20% alpaca, and then 20% silk, uh, either people refer to it as silk noil or silk borette, which is um, the byproduct of uh, working with uh, filament silk, you know, because most silk um, comes out in, in a continuous filament from the cocoon. And um, there's often, you know, little fibers that come out and that that kind of waste product, although it's not waste waste at all, and it's definitely not wasteful because we're using it, uh, is uh, creates short fibers that when blended with others, um, it comes out and gives a lot of texture. So it has... Um, the body from the merino, but it has nice drape from the alpaca and the silk. And the silk noil, though, is also there, not only for its softness, but it, it's there also because this is a hand-dyed yarn. Uh, most of the colors are dyed in open in kettles. Some of them are what we call heathers, where the fibers are dyed before they're spun, and some of them are natural colors. Um, but the silk noil allows the, the dye to uh, take that silk very differently. And Usually the silk grabs certain colors first before the wool and the alpaca will. And so the so silk noir will often pop up on the surface of the fabric. It's one of those yarns that's really great for texture. It, it'll show a defined stitch, but you kind of got to be careful with uh, going too heavy, like for all over cabling and things like that, because that 40% alpaca and silk will create drape and weight. And so it, your garment may stretch. So um it's always best to, if you're using texture stitches with Acadia, to to limit the, you know, the all over cabling. You don't really want to do that, I would say. And um, uh, I think we talked about the new colors. Yes, or the the colors. We do have some new colors in Acadia. We'll just be showing you uh, those on the screen. But the range of shades in Acadia are really well defined in in the next design. So Becky, tell us about this beauty. Yeah, beautiful colours. So this is the Ways of Water Wrap by Jennifer Kemp. It's a rect rectangular wrap knitted end to end using a zigzag pattern of eyelets and garter stitch to create that tilting sort of blocks of colour. 
And then the gradient pattern is achieved by alternating solid sections and striped sections. So Jennifer said, the stitch I used reminds me of the waves crashing on the shore. And the graduations of colours is reminiscent of all the different colours reflected at different levels in the ocean. So you could you could have really have fun with a colour palette in this one and, you know, the different ombre designs you could create throughout. And it's, again, advanced beginner and our level. Yeah, I, I agree about all the colour choices. Here's a yarn ball, everyone, by the way. Please count this one. Yarn ball. Um, the palette has lots of gradient choices. You could do one of these kind of muted blue, blue-green colorways of the original sample, but there's really nice neutrals um, in Acadia and just taking five of those and doing a gradient of those would be stunning. Um, also kind of a red-purple gradient is possible in, in the line, or you could even use contrasting um, complementary colors to have uh, more of you know a pop every now and then of color. So there's lots of options and we have some ideas on our website for how to do that. Um, I think one of the reasons Acadia is so great for this is that it just, it does excel with drape. And this is one of those pieces you, you want to drape. Um, and it can be worn out like this in a, a big drapey garment, or you can wrap it up. And we have lots of images on our website to show all the different ways to wear it. And you can really see how they would um, you know, almost change change the whole look of what what you're um, what you're wearing, and depending on how how you style it. Um, but I think now it's time to take a look at another yarn. Yes, because that was two in Acadia. Now we're going to look at Amble. And um, uh, Becky, tell us about the fan shell tea. Fan shell tea. This designed by Ariana Frasca, and I've got another lovely quote. It says, I wanted to capture the essence of seaside serenity in a wearable garment, blending a sense of relaxation with a touch of elegance. It's got a beautiful traditional shell pattern, a, a sort of new variation on it, down the centre front and along the sleeves. And then the neckline hem and cuffs are edged with just a simple garter stitch. And this pattern's got a lovely option of being able to tailor the sleeve lengths. There is a short sleeve, an elbow, elbow length sleeve, and a three quarter length sleeve. So whatever takes your preference there. It's worked seamlessly from the bottom up and the round to the underarms, then the front and back are worked separate, work, uh, separated and worked flat. So yeah, it's great. I think that's a great choice to be able to have the different sleeve options there with that design. Yeah, I agree. It's a it's a really good one for that, especially since you have that beautiful stitch pattern down the sleeve. So if you really want that to go <laughs> on, um, you have that option, don't you? So what about amble here? Um, well, first of all, it takes only two to six hanks of amble to to make this version of it. Oh, by the way, guys, here's a yarn ball. Please write that down. Um, but the blend here is 70% wool, 20% alpaca, and 10% recycled nylon. So I mentioned recycled nylon is one of the first non-natural fibers we use. But there's something special about this wool and this alpaca. It has a, 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 a treatment to it that makes it machine washable, except it's not superwash, what's known as superwash. It's something called easy wash. And it uses a process that's different to the typical polymer-treated or chlorine treated um, uh, yarns that are called superwash. Um, and we wanted an eco-friendly version of this for a purpose-made sock yarn. So when we first developed Amble, uh, it, was, it was about making socks. And we came out with a pattern called the one sock pattern. And we have tons and tons of one sock or pa sock patterns out there in the world using Amble. Uh, but we started seeing designers uh, make sweaters with it. Uh, Melanie Berg was one of the first. She made this gorgeous sweater called Planetary, and it was an amble. And one of the neat things about amble is it comes in 100 gram skeins as well as 25 gram skeins. So you can get fun with um, color work and uh, not have to, you know, have, or using lots of colors, not having to buy them all in 100 gram hanks. So we started, we started seeing designers do more and more outside of socks. And we said, hey, we've got a great yarn here. Let's let's try more garments with it. So we've been doing more garments. And this fan shell tee is, is one of those. And we've also added um, three new shades to the lineup. This shade here is called Heathland. Um, and we'll show you the new shades here shortly. Um, we have one more garment in Amble to show you. 
We do. So this is another crochet garment, the open wreath sweater, and that's designed by Kirsten Joel. The designer wanted this piece to be worn with a pair of jeans, which is shown here, over a crisp blouse for a work-ready look, or you can even wear it as a layer over a swimsuit. And she's accomplished this by using an Irish stitch, I iris, <laughs> with no H on the end, for an open lace fabric that creates the gently scalloped shape at the bottom. It's a flattering crop fit with a wide crew neck and bracelet sleeves. And although it appears like an advanced stitch, I'm told it's only a single row repeat. So it's very meditative to work. Like coming from me, I'm a non-crocheter. So, <laughs> but I feel like I could I could give that a go. I know some of the basics. So if it's a one row repeat, I think I could I could try that. Um top down and then back and forth in rows, starting with the the wide, the wide boat neck. And the body, it's worked in one piece in the round. Yeah, and I think it we this one's been classified as intermediate. Um, but I don't know, Becky, I think like you, I know the basics and I've seen this pattern and I wouldn't be afraid to try it. It takes three to six hanks of amble. Um, and one thing I would say about crochet and one of the reasons we haven't done that much crochet is that oftentimes crochet takes that much more yarn and yardage, doesn't it? And so often when you know, the yarns are at, at, a, at a higher price point, sometimes crochet is not that accessible. So we've, we've tended not to do that much of it. Uh, but three to six hanks, that puts it in the accessible range, I think, in particular for an open uh, lace wake st stitch like this. And yeah. although it's classified as intermediate, I might give this one a go if it was, um, you know, with that one row repeat as, uh, you yeah, know, Yeah, well, you could practice you... the stitch first, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> that nailed down and then... Yeah, exactly that. yeah, exactly that. So, okay, it's time to move on to the next yarn. I'm just, uh, I think we're doing okay, but um, next yarn is, what's next up? It is meadow, isn't it? We have two designs in our meadow yarn, which is our rustic luxury, heavy lace weight yarn. So versatile though. Uh, first up is the Sand Hill sweater. Sand Hill sweater, yes. So this design is from Marian Murzik. It's a lightweight, boxy sweater, knitted top down, seamlessly beginning at the shoulder line. It has some really simple, effective details on the boat neck, uh, like an I-cord trim, and it appears to sort of grow into the detailing along the drop shoulder. And then it's got really deep angle, like ribbed cuffs, but they're at an angle, so it's a really lovely, nice detail on the arm. And then the body features a absolutely beautiful wavy stitch pattern that just mimics the sand, the you know, the patterns left on the sand by the ocean. It's perfect stitch choice for that. Um yeah. worked flat. Uh the body, yeah, what we've got worked flat until the main body and then joined and then worked on the round. Yeah, that's such a that's such a good formula for a sweater, isn't it? It's just I love anything with a boat neck. I think a boat neck flatters on everybody and yeah, I just absolutely. you know it's just just one of those ones isn't it it just everybody can wear a boat neck and it just screams um you know warm weather uh but what's meadow about I said heavy lace weight and um I always I hesitate to say lace because I know some people just really just go oh lace weight too many stitches I'm not interested but um uh, so so we use that word heavy lace weight to just encourage you to take a look at it and look at all the different things that are made in Meadow because it is this lovely blend of linen, silk, baby llama, and merino. And so about 40% of it is the merino and the rest of it is 15 linen, 20 silk, and 25% baby llama. So a lot of drapey fibers in there and just enough of the merino to give it some a, a bit of bounce so you're not knitting with something totally dead and the 100 gram hank has 540 yards approximately 500 meters so this heavy lace weight is really good for not just lightweight accessories but also garments and i've seen it knit in many different gauges and it it makes for a perfect summer weight sweater so the linen in this uh yarn is not dyed the silk the wool and the llama are all dyed and the main reason that is, is because the the linen is, is a plant or cellulosic fiber because it's something that grows and it has it has cells like that. And it takes a different type of dye to um, stay in those cells, whereas 
the silk wool and llama are protein-based fibers. And so the dye has to interact with those proteins. And so they all take the dye differently and we don't dye the linen on purpose. And this helps us create some really nice duo tones. Not all of the shades are hand dyed, but even the ones that aren't. Like for example, this shade here is, um, it's called Prairie and it's not hand dyed, but it still has this really nice texture from the linen because the linen is not dyed. And so you, you get a very subtle uh, duo tone and texture from that. Now this sweater will take two to four hanks of meadow. So it goes a long way across nine sizes, only four hanks. And I would say that um, we do have questions from time to time from people uh, about the linen. And they uh, initially are, when well, they're knitting along and they, they pull out a fine fiber and it, they say, what is this? Is this a, a fault in the, in the yarn? And it's actually not, but when linen is generally a, a fairly long staple length and it's super straight, it doesn't have uh, the crimp that wool has at all. And so it means that the ends will poke out of a blend a little bit at the end. And that's what creates, we think, this beautiful rustic look. And uh, so that is very natural. Don't pull those fibers out because you'll be pulling out all the linen. Um, and uh, we have another one to show you. And this one too coming up is for our crochet lovers. Yes, beautiful marish wrap designed by Sarah Korf. So this lovely drapey shawl is crocheted lengthwise starting at the top with rows of open wave stitches and finishing with a section of reverse shell stitch, which creates a more solid fabric. So if you wore it draped over the shoulders and allowed it to hang, the weight opens up the stitch pattern and creates a more open fabric. And then if you wore it more like a scarf wrapped around the neck, the stitches close up a bit and it can provide a bit more warmth as a neck accessory. The designer said she wanted the stitches to mimic the visual waves of the ocean, but also combine a soothing stitch pattern reminiscent of the relaxing sound of the waves washing up on the shore. And I think you definitely see that and that the, the stitch work in this is just incredible. I love it. It really is. When it came in to the office um, here, uh, when it first returned uh, or came into us and we saw yeah. this, we were just wow. Me wow. too. <laughs> I was like, you know, crochet, how's this done? And how is it and done? The, <laughs> yeah. How's this done? And um, I don't know about how, you know, these, these, um, what is this called down here again? These wave, um, no, um, they have a name, these little wavy like things is on the bottom. Reverse shell stitch. Reverse shell stitch. Yes. Yeah. So I don't know about doing that, you know, if my skills would be strong enough to do it, but I looked at the other pattern and I knew I could do the other pattern. And I thought, well, even if I couldn't do the reverse shell, I could do that. And one of the interesting things about this design is when you hold it out, as you saw in that last image, it, those waves really just appear even deeper because of yeah. the weight it has a lovely out. weight to this it takes four hangs of meadows so you're you're you know it's a it's a weighty accessory but it really creates this this beautiful effect and um i think it really comes through this is uh shown in the shade alfalfa um let's go on now uh, to our next yarn luma uh, we have five designs in Luma, and Becky's going to walk us through the first design. I'm going to talk about Luma as a yarn, and then she's just going to run us through the other four designs, and uh, we will get through those rather quickly. Okay, perfect. So this is the Gentle Breeze Shawl by, by Oksana Demyuth. It's a simple to knit triangular shawl, so sort of advanced beginner knitter skill level. And it features a relaxing garter stitch pattern, which is interspersed with little eyelet rows. And then the, the leaf motif that you'll see on the edges, that's worked as you go. So it's all worked in one piece from the, from the bottom up. And then will you tell us a little bit about Luma on the next slide? Yes, that? yes. Well, I mean, when you asked me to tell a little bit about any of our yarns. Oh, here's a <laughs> yarn ball, guys. I know. Okay. It's hard for you to keep it short. It's hard for me not to just go, 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 go. So um, I think sometimes, you know, I could go too far, but I could definitely tell you about Luma. Luma is a fun yarn. It was, it was, it's, it was a morph, morphed yarn. So we're not a yarn brand that every season has new yarns, right? So we, uh, because we started with our mill um, 
it kind of as we develop product, it they just really they need to have a place and a purpose and um, a lot of thought behind it. And you know, we're just too small to just be throwing out new yarns every season. But we had used to have a yarn called Savannah. And if some of you are longtime friends of the Fiber Co., you might remember Savannah. And it was one of the first yarns that we made in our mill. And it had organic cotton and um, it had soy fiber in it. And what else do we throw into that? Some linen and we used some merino. I think that's what that blend was. And uh, it was a really hard yarn to reproduce in a large commercial mill because those fibers are all really different lengths. You have short cotton, especially organic cotton is, is tends to be on the shorter side. And then you have long linen and then you have silk. Um, we well, this was not silk noil, but it was so you know, and but it wasn't filament silk either. It, I think I, I, it was you know kind of cut silk. And then you have merino and all these different fiber lengths. And a lot of the large commercial mills just couldn't make that work. Uh, but we finally found a mill to do that, and uh, it was enough of a different blend that we changed the name. So we didn't keep the name Savannah, but it became known as Luma. And uh, because it reminds us of lightness and light itself and perfect for the season with the long light and uh, all of those fibers create uh, a yarn that's soft, has a you know beautiful handle, um, warmth if you need it because the merino is in the blend and there's enough drape in there, but it has great stitch definition. The DK weight in this makes it quite versatile. If you had a cardigan, for example, in Luma, you could wear that three seasons, you know, open, worn open, and maybe as you get closer to the super warm, or not super warm, but warmer temperatures and, you know, closed up and going to provide enough warmth in, um, you know, a lot, a lot of climates. The Gentle Breeze shawl uses seven hanks of Luma. Luma is a 50 gram hank. So seven hanks is not that not that heavy, just a little over you know, 300 grams total. And uh, it's just a very lofty, beautiful yarn. I hope you'll consider giving it a try. This is known as the shade Pearl River. Now, Becky, I'll let you have the rest of the Luma designs. I won't say any more about Luma because I still I could go on, but I think <laughs> I've said enough. And if you okay. could just tell us about the next designs. I'll take it from here. So the next one is the Serenity tunic designed by Elizabeth Margaret. And like you were saying about the stitch definition that, that Luma can showcase, this tunic features a lace pattern on the yoke and the bottom sides of the body. And that was inspired by the designer's love of Japanese lace stitches. It's knitted bottom up seamlessly in the round and it's got a little garter stitch hem and sleeve cuff just to sort of get a little beautiful finish. We've got short rows incorporated into the yoke for the improved neck and shoulder fit and um, sleeves are finished from the top down so you could you know you can customize this one as well if you wanted longer sleeves and we've got suitable for advanced beginner knitters. And then on to the next slide you can see that yoke and the next slide coming up you can see the yoke detail um, a bit more a bit closer up there so really beautiful stitch work and it takes 7 to 14 hanks of luma shown in the shade plum and then we have our second design from oxana which is the primavera tea this one's designed for relaxed knitting and comfortable wearing it's oversized easy to wear features a lovely eyelet and lace pattern at the body hem and the cuffs and knitted bottom up, the project begins with one by one, uh, sorry, one by two twisted rib. And then it goes into the eyelet lace pattern. And then the majority of the knitting after that is stockinette stitch. This one is worked in pieces and then sewn together. So the seams give uh, a firm structure for the, the oversized garment. There's very little shape in and it is designed with nine to 16 inches of positive ease. So it's definitely that comfy, comfy wearing little tee and suitable for advanced beginner knitters, this one. And then on to our next slide, that just tells us that the it's shown in this shade sage and takes seven to 14 hanks of Luma. 
Then our next design, the Sundance Slipover, designed by Ellie Woods. The designer says about this one that she wanted to, the design to be clean, simple and elegant, but also wanted to show the beautiful qualities of the yarn. I used the garter stitch detail and the integral trims to elongate the body, taking the garter stitch border in a single line up the centre front and around the neckline. I wanted the finished piece to be easy to knit and easy to wear. So the slipover is worked seamlessly from the bottom up and features a wide split hem. The garter stitch hem is worked flat in two separate sections because it's got the split there before joining in the body. And yeah, it looks great on its own or layered over a blouse and you can adapt it easily to, to suit your style. And that's another advanced beginner knit. That one is shown in the shade Flamingo and it's six to 12 hanks over the nine sizes. That's a really nice close-up picture of the detail there. And then is this our last Luma design? It is. So this is the Tranquil Twin Set or by Mackenzie Alvarez, our final pattern in Luma. And we have a matching cardigan and camisole set. The designer said, I wanted to design, to design a simple everyday cardigan and cami set, but one with a fun stitchy detail that would tie the two together. And this is done by the simple lace insert that's going up the sleeves and then also around the hem on the camisole. So both the pieces are knit seamlessly with advanced beginner skill level. And some just some information about the cardigan. It's worked from the top down as a V-neck with raglan sleeves. Then the balloon sleeves have got that lace work that, that runs up the centre from the cuff. The body is worked in stock and stitch with a one by one rib collar hem and trim. And the trim is picked up all the way up the front opening and around the collar. And then for the camisole, it's a boxy shape, snitted bottom up in the ring to the underarm. It's then divided to work the front and back sections flat with neck and arm shaping. And after grafting the shoulder straps together, a little I-cord edge is added around the neckline and the armhole openings. And these are both shown in stonewash, 8 to 16 hanks for the cardigan and 1 to 8 hanks for the cami. And Thanks, that, Becky. We have yeah. one more yarn to get through, four designs. And I want to make sure we have some time left over to uh, look at some color development and okay. our process for that. So we're going to walk you through now our and make designs. Okay, so we have the Connections Cardi by Claire Mountain Manapon. The Connections Cardi is an open cardigan with a super relaxed silhouette. Claire said she loves designing patterns for elevated basics. These are pieces that are versatile enough for our daily wear, but with a little twist of something special in the design details. And this one has got that with this sweet little garter stitch and eyelet detailing that's down the centre back. And then it's also mirrored on the sleeve cuff and the hem. The hem on this one has got two options. It's got a split hem or a classic hem. And then over to you, Daphne, for some animation. Okay, so for some information about the yarn, first of all, uh, make sure you count this yarn ball. And Make DK is this blend of Peruvian Highland wool, alpaca, and linen. And the And Make range is a collection of three yarns in different weights, as of today. We hope to add more to it, that are on the more accessible, affordable side of making. Uh, this particular trio of fibers in a DK weight uh, gives a, a really good stitch definition as well as excellent drape. You'll see this in all four of the designs. The shade here is called Lit, and this cardigan takes 8 to 15 balls. They're 50 gram balls. And uh, Becky's now going to walk us through the next three designs in this little capsule collection of and make DK. Yep, so Bye. next up we have the Dreamy Drift Tea by Trisha McKenzie. It's a relaxed, loose-fitting top with a wide crew neck and it features an all-over stitch pattern consisting of eyelets, garter stitches and drop stitches and a repeat of 14 rounds. So it's quite straightforward to follow once you've, you can kind of memorise it. So we, you know, advanced beginner knitters for this one. Knit in the round, bottom up to the underarms and then separated worked flat after that with a free needle cast off to join your shoulders and that is shown in the shade spearmint and takes five to eleven balls and make dk and there's another yarn ball there <laughs> and our next design coming up is the recharge sweater so that's our second design from claire 
and she told us I'm always drawn to texture so I spent a lot of time swatching different ones kind of like mark making I wanted the pieces to have a common thread and I did this through the use of eyelets so the eyelets were used in the connections card and then they've got little eyelet detail again and recharge so in this design both the body and the sleeve hems feature an eyelet rib with a little stockinette rolled hem um, it's loose fit and boxy sweater, full of texture with an all over garter rib stitch. And then it's got the little rolled neckline again on the around the necks. And um, what else have we got to pass on? Knitted bottom up and the round to the underarm divide on that one. And 10 to 18 balls of Anne Make DK. And this shade is called Surfs Up. And then uh, this is our... can I, Becky, can I just interject here and yeah. say I've just seen somebody say something in the chat about loving all the colors that have been shown. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that happens in our process at the beginning is after we decide on the designs and, and selections is Becky goes to the drawing boards with all the colors and she proposes uh, a color palette for all the designs with the idea that they'll look great together when we come to this point and get to show off everything that we've been doing. Yeah. And uh, so thank you, Becky, for for taking your time with color color choices in our in our designs, because it really makes a difference, doesn't it? Yeah. Thank you for creating such beautiful palettes to choose oh. from. <laughs> so, yes, this is our last and make DK design, the Wonderlust Yoke Top by Dario Tubiano. And it's a really flattering crew neck tee that features a two color stripe. So you could have loads of fun with your different color combinations here. And the stripe patterns have got varied, varied widths. So it's knitted in the round, top down, uses a simple stockinette stitch, and then you can get your pizzazz with alternating stripes of two colors. There's some shape in incorporated in the yoke section for improved fit in your sleeves or work last. And that one suitable for advanced beginner knitters. Take six to 12 balls of Unmake DK, and these shades are Mill Pink and Look at the Stars. All right, that takes us through all of the designs, and we've been through all of these now. And I'm gonna, just gonna show you a little grid. All 18 things that you could make, and many, many versions of each, but. These are the 18 different um, patterns uh, in the collection. So we hope you found something to inspire you. We'd like to take a little bit of time right now. Oh, make sure you count this yarn ball. We have new colors in four of our lines. Usually I just flash up a slide at this point and show you our new colors, but I thought it'd be fun to take a deeper dive into Ciro. And how did we decide to have these five new colors? Well, they do look kind of spring-like and, Summer like they're light colors. They they kind of remind you of the maybe the colors you'd wear in the season. But there is more to this than just that. So I'm going to uh, stop sharing my screen and show you a um, <clears throat> on my desk. I have a little something to show you here. One moment, and I'll switch my camera. Okay. So where I begin with a uh, new color development is I have these mini skeins of all of our yarns. And at the beginning of the season, I brought myself in front of all these beautiful mini skeins here of Ciro. And I had a look and I said, what's here, what's missing? What might we want to add? And I noticed that we were getting quite heavy on the Ciro colors with black cotton core. So almost all of these colors here, except for three on this row, had the black cotton core. So we were very heavy on the black cotton core and not as much on the white cotton core. And I said, well, that actually coincides with the spring season. So why don't I see what we can do with um, using white cotton core this season? So after coming up with, I think it was some ridiculous number I sent off to the mill, lab dips, for, um, oh, I think it was about 30 colors, but <laughs> they're always really good and they uh, they oblige me. And we ended up with these five lovelies. Let me get this right here. And they're all using the white and they all fit beautifully into the palette. And so they, with our uh, Ciro uh, is, is kind of, remember I said at the beginning, we things have a sense of place to us. And um, usually that's very worldly places, but Ciro is, our tagline for Ciro is ethereal beauty. And we've started 
being inspired by things that were otherworldly because it's, you know, just so soft and so beautiful and so ethereal that um, the yarn names have, this is Titan's Haze, this, this purple here. And then we have um, the Blue Moon. And then we have Comet. And then we have infrared. And then lastly, we have Polaris. So these are our five new colors. Now, what I wanted to show you now is just what does it look like to, I mean, you saw the garments and those images, but really what's the difference between a black cotton core and a white cotton core in, in you know, knitting terms? What, what does it look like? So we have these very plain stockinette stitch swatches here, two kind of light, uh, lilac colors. They're not the same dye on each of these, but they're both light uh, lilac colors. And you can see with the black cotton core here on the right of your screen that you just lose all stitch definition and it looks very muted and um, maybe a moody shade. And then on the left side of your screen, the Titan's Haze, one of the new shades, you really can see all of those stitches because of the way the white cotton core pops out of that. And then the next shade I wanted to show you the difference was these two reds. The same thing is happening here with the black cotton core and the dye that was used here is a little different than the dye used on the new shade infrared, but the darker shade Mars has a lot of depth to it and you really can't see the stitches. So don't waste your time with lots of uh, fancy stitch work, but make yourself a beautiful silhouette, something with a gorgeous silhouette, and it's really going to be a nice statement piece. And then lastly, I thought I would show you a yellow and the difference here. And um, the camera color isn't so bad, but it, uh, it's not, not completely true either. But you can see that these are both yellow colors and what a difference between the black and the white cotton core. So I hope this gives you a little bit of insight into kind of how it works and the process that we go through. And in particular, um, what it was like to uh, uh, think about Ciro and what Ciro is good for and what we might need in the line going forward and how we decided on the colors that we did. So I'm going to go back to sharing the presentation with you. Bear with me. I'm going to switch over to that again and share my screen. And we're going to show you the new colors for the rest of uh, the colors that we have new colors for. And then we're going to put up the poll and you get the chance to ask your question. All right. So we just left off with these five colors here in zero. The next one up that we have new colors in is Amble, five new colors in Amble. Many of the colors in our Amble range are the same colors in our Cumbria and Cumbria fingering ranges. And then Meadow, we added four new colors. And Acadia, there are five new colors coming in Acadia. These won't be out until next month, but all the other new colors are available now. So just ask at your local stockist. Oh, finally to the prize slide. I thought we'd never get here, <laughs> uh, but we are here. And after we go through the prizes, uh, I'm going to put up the polls. So please make sure your pop off blockers are off because you won't see it. It is. It actually does pop up. Um, and give me a moment to put the poll up. I'll let you know when it's there. I'm going to stop my share and go to the poll and put that up. Here it is. The poll is now launching. So I hope you counted some yarn balls. Uh, we do tend to like even color, even numbers around here. So um, that might be where your answers are headed to an even number. All right, I can see that most people are answering. I'm just going to leave that open for a little bit longer until I don't see any changes. I'm going to look at the Q&A and I can see that we had some questions, but they've all been answered. Uh, but I thought I would go ahead and just ask if anybody has any questions to um, put them in the Q&A at this point. Um, I'll also start looking at the chat here. And um, if you put your answer in the chat, we won't be able to count that, unfortunately. So you do need to answer the actual poll, which is still live. So if you put it 
in the webinar chat, just go ahead and click on uh, the, the uh, answer on the pop-up that has come up that says polls slash quizzes yarn ball count and put your answer in there because we can't count it in the chat. Um, and um, <clears throat> so that would be helpful if you can do that. I don't see it. Oh, here's something else that's come in Q&A. So I'll take a look at those while we wait. Um, thank you for the presentation, Samia says. Uh, does Fiberco ever do webinar classes on color palette combinations? I find it hard to pick colors. Yeah, it is. It's it's not a um, it's not an easy thing, and especially it's not that particularly easy when you're doing it on the screens either. But there is a theory behind it, and we do have a desire to do more education. Um, we're quite a small team, and and don't really have. Uh, you know, the, the resources to put a lot, out a lot of education right now, but that is one that's on our list to do. So just make sure you stay in touch with us and uh, be on the lookout for that sort of um, announcement for an event like that. But we do, we do want to do more. Um, another question has come in from Janet. After blocking, does the Ciro grow a little? Yes, it might, <laughs> it can. So it could also, you know, shrink a little bit too if you aren't careful with the you know how you how you wash it and what you what you do with it in in the the blocking process so you know treat it like any wool very carefully and definitely do a swatch i would um you know you're going to be <clears throat> not you're probably not going to have too much problem with a, a, a basic stockinette stitch and a lot of the zero knitting will be that and uh but definitely do a swatch that's big enough that when you wash it um you, you know, you put it down. I'm not saying hang it to see what it does, but if you're thinking about a long piece, maybe you would make a, a, a longer rather than wider swatch and you would consider hanging it just to see how it would react after it's been hanging for a while. Um, is Amble washable merino? Yes. Is it treated with less chemicals? It's treated with different chemicals. So it is washable merino. It's also washable uh, alpaca. And it's called, uh, it's a trademark name called Easy Wash. And the Easy Wash process was developed for, for those who um, were concerned about the chlorine process used for superwash. I'm not saying it's all bad. There are probably makers of chlorine treated wool that follow all the environmental standards regarding effluent and that sort of thing. But for the most part, um, it's made in places where we really we maybe didn't have as much confidence that chlorine treated uh, wool was going to be handled correctly. So that's why we've always stayed away from it. And then the other treatment, the polymer treated, well, that's just, you know, plastics, more plastics. And again, something that we didn't want to be involved in. But the easy wash process is an enzyme. It's a man-made enzyme, but it is a natural enzyme. So it's synthetic, but a natural from a natural formula, but uh, there's not enough of it that occurs naturally, so they have to make it, but it is a natural enzyme and it just reduces the scales enough so that it doesn't uh, felt when you wash it in the machine. But there are instructions about the care instructions about how to use it. So you don't just like throw it into the washing machine on any old temperature, follow the care instructions for the temperature given, and it is not machine dryable. So definitely don't put it in your dryable dryer. Um, after blocking, do your yarns change much when blocked? Um, all of them can, and it uh, depends on the stitches that you're doing. And so it's just really always, always um, uh, do a swatch that is then blocked because our measurements, our gauge that we give you if you're working from our patterns, and most really good designers will do this, their gauge swatches have been blocked and the stitches measured at that point. Is Anne Make new this season? What's behind the name? Oh, okay. <clears throat> Anne Make was new in the autumn of 2022. Um, what's behind the name? Well, it was about, we thought long and hard about our yarns and how accessible they were or they weren't because of the fibers that we use. And they're just high cost. We, we tried to keep them as low as possible, but we thought about, 
there was this big, broad group of makers in the world that maybe couldn't use our yarns because of their price point. And we thought for the makers that are out there, how, what could we do? So we started working with our our most favorite mill at, about looking at fibers and the cost of different fibers and how could we still use natural fibers, but have it at a better price point and still have it be soft and have it be something that people wanted to work with, wanted to put their hands on. And so the idea behind it all was make, 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 and how broadly could we make it? And we started talking about and making. And uh, so, yeah, well, that's where it came from, this idea of and make. So, and I'll take one more question here. Does your pattern yardage have allowance for swatching? Yes, it does. And it all states that it does as well. And the size of the swatch as well will give you that information in the pattern. All right, so I'm going to end the poll. I, I can see that um, lots of people chose 12. I think that's probably the correct answer. And um, I, what we're going to do from here is, first of all, thank you for coming and uh, spending this hour with us. It's been fun, Becky. It always is, isn't it? Yes, it has. Thank you for it, having me on. I love talking about all the designs. I know. It's fun to get to this point and, and say, you know, there's been work going on for probably some of these designs for well over a year. And yeah. uh, but we get to this point and we're all already in the middle of future seasons. And um, sometimes it's it's good to stop and say, oh, yeah, yeah, this is now. These are things are out there now. And let's let's take a, a little bit of time out to to look at them so that's been fun so we thank you very much what we're going to do from here is look at the um the answers to the poll and everybody who answered is going to be entered into the poll now let's say you got that number wrong there's a survey when you close out there's a survey and if you answer that survey your name will also appear on the list of correct answers okay so everybody has a chance to be a winner today if you didn't get that right answer you just answer the survey questions that are going to appear as soon as we end the webinar it'll pop up so if you didn't get the um get the uh the answer that you think you should have gotten well go ahead and answer that survey and we'll be delighted to receive your feedback and thank you very much for joining us today <laughs>